Hi, this is James here. Um, welcome to the channel. I've got an update on my Shelly dimmers. I've had them installed for about a month now, and so I've just got a little bit of news on how I've found them. In addition to that, we're going to be doing a full install and installing a dimmer from start to finish and setting it up in Home Assistant. So the um, latest um, firmware updates has brought some good changes to the Shelly dimmers. Uh, since I've done my last video, they've made it so you can have custom MQTT topics. They've also made it so you can set a minimum dim level, so you can set it to only go down to 5 or 10 percent. And, um, and most um, importantly, they made the calibration setting um, work much better. It's excellent the way it works now. You simply choose a dim mode, trailing edge, leading edge, and run a calibration, and it does a much better job than it did when I initially got the dimmers. So today we're going to be installing a Shelly dimmer in a walk-in robe. We're replacing an existing single switch plate and a Sonoff Basic. So we're going to take that switch plate off the wall and remove the Sonoff Basic. Of course, before we do that, I need to remind you and warn you that working with mains voltage can be dangerous and you can kill yourself. You need to know what you're doing and work safely with it. And in some countries, you need to be licensed to do this kind of work. If you do, um, if you do do this work, make sure that the power is correctly isolated and you've tested it is safe with a um, with a, um, a good quality multimeter. So once we've isolated the power, we're going to remove the switch plate, remove the Sonoff Basic, and in my setup, we're going to be using a Shelly dimmer, which is a three-wire one, so it requires a neutral. There is a, a two-wire dimmer that can work on 240 volts only, but we're not using that today. We're going to be using two switches and we're going to have one for dim up and one for dim down. And that's a, a function that's available in the Shelly dimmer. So our switches that we're using are momentary and they have normally open and normally closed contacts. However, you will only need normally open contacts. These particular switches and we've got the common and we've got normally closed and normally open. Normally closed on these on many switches in Australia have got the little hash over them. Um, so, because you wouldn't normally use them, you normally use the normally, the normally open, and we are going to use the normally open in this case. We simply connect our active wires um, to the commons on the switches, and then we feed the Shelly dimmer with an active connection into L. We then take our neutral wires and we join them together, and we bring a neutral connection into N on our Shelly dimmer. And then our earth wires we terminate, and they'll continue on to the light fitting. This, um, if you have a metal switch box or a metal switch plate, the, new, the earth, protective earthing will be required if that is necessary. However, in many cases it's not, and in my case it's not required. It simply needs to be terminated in the switch box. In addition to that, we've got our two uh, switch wires. One goes from I1 and I2 to each of the switches to operate our dimmer. And finally, we have our output to, that runs off to our light. Now it's important that you make sure that you correctly identify the correct locations for neutral especially. If you get that in the wrong place you can cause trouble, damage your dimmer and short something out. We have our neutral connection which is going to come to the neutral on the Shelly dimmer. However if you get that, if you find it difficult to identify active and neutral, no sorry, active and the switch wire, if you get those around the wrong way the dimmer simply won't turn on. And so you just can open, turn the power off and swap them round and then try it again. However, however, in my case, I have mine labelled because I wired the house and it's always good and handy to label stuff. It makes life really easy. So we've installed our device now and we've safely put the switch back on the wall and we've turned our power back on. We now need to grab a laptop and connect to the wireless access point that the Shelly dimmer makes. Now this is not the only way to set up, a, set up the dimmers, however I've li I prefer this way, I think it's faster and easier. We log into our dimmer at, at 192.168.33.1 and we browse to the setup and we change the Wi-Fi settings to our SSID and password. It will now log on to our network and we can find it in our router and browse back to it the IP address that our router will give our Shelly dimmer. Once we're in the setup menu once again on our network we can do some settings. Now if you've got the switches around the wrong way, so up is down and down is up, 
we can swap them, swap them here. It's a setting just to swap the switches over, so we don't have to rewire it to change that. And we can also we also need to calibrate our lights. So in this situation, I have chosen to use um, leading edge dimming. I've run a calibration and found it to work really well with my light fittings. I actually have cheap lights. They only cost about eight dollars each. They are Philips down lights, and they work quite well. However, the, the light quality coming out of them is not that great. It's just average. I have some more expensive lights in my house with a higher um, light quality, higher CRI, and they seem to be a bit more fickle about how, which dimming method they use. And um, but they still work okay with the Shelly, fine with the Shelly dimmers. So once once we've calibrated our lights and everything's working with this wall switch, we can go up and down and everything's working fine. We can now set up our MQTT settings in our Shelly dimmer. Once we've entered our broker and um, wherever that's located, with me it's part of the broker that a mosquito that comes with Home Assistant. Um, we can now set up our light in Home Assistant. I showed you how to do that in the previous video, but we'll just do a quick run over again. We set that up in our light YAML file. The YAML will be in the description down below. In addition, we're going to also set up our energy sensors, which we didn't do before. So we can set up power usage and um, energy usage. The power is the instantaneous watts that the dimmer is using, and the energy is the watts per minute that the dimmer is using. Um, we can set them up in the sensor part of our YAML file. Once again, the YAML to use is in the description down below. A, co a common problem that I find with LEDs is with, and dimmers is if you turn them down very low, the lights will go down very low. But if you turn the switch off and then back on again, the lights won't come on at all. And it's not until you turn the light level up that they'll kick in. Some dimmers have a, what's called a kickstart function that's, that will kick them in and then dim bring the level back down low. However, the Shelly dimmer doesn't have it, this function. In this situation, I have selected to set my minimum level to 5%. You don't have to do this, but I've just found that if I put it at 5%, I don't get this issue occurring. However, I won't be able to put my light level down past 5%, which in my case, it doesn't bother me. It's fine to be like that. Um, but if you don't want to um, do that in your situation, and just bear in mind that sometimes if the lights are very low, you'll need to press up and bring the level up before um, the lights actually will turn on. This can be a little bit confusing and it can decrease the wife, wife acceptance factor, which is why I've chosen to set a minimum dim level in my case, because my wife will be using it and she won't like it if it happens. An excellent feature I found using the Shelly Dimmers for about a month is the nighttime mode. I found it to be super useful for bedrooms. You can set in this case here, I'm going to set this dimmer to 15% level um, between 9 o'clock at night and 7 o'clock in the morning. I found it to be really helpful and useful. So when you turn the light on at the wall, it will always come on at 15% and it stops you from getting blinded in the middle of the night. Overall, I found the dimmers to be really good and to work really well. I have had some minor um, strobing issues and flickering issues when the lights are down at a very low level. However, it's, um, it's nothing that I haven't seen before in other dimmers. And for the price that you pay for this dimmer, it's excellent value. And in addition, you can connect it to Wi-Fi and to your home automation setup and does energy monitoring. So I think it's an amazing little device still and definitely worth buying. However, if you want to have um, perfect lights and you want to go from 1% to 100% with no strobing, no flickering, no stuttering, then I have got the lights for you. I'll give you a little taster of a video that I've got planned coming up in the future. I've got some lights in this bedroom that we're standing in now and they have got drivers that are connected with DALI drivers. And I've actually got a, I'm actually using push dim at the moment, but DALI can be connected to Home Assistant via MQTT. You'll find that they will dim from 1% to 100%. So these ones are at 100%. If I hold the button, it'll dim all the way down to a very, very low level. You can turn them off and on. It's very smooth, very linear. 
and it works amazing. So look out for that video. It'll be coming up in the near future, um, all about daily lighting and how you can integrate it into your home um, automation setup if you want to have the perfect dimming lights. But for everyone else and for those that um, are okay with just good, excellent quality dimmers, nice and easy to install, then the Shelly dimmer is for you. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe um, for more home automation um, gadgets and installation um, tutorials. Um, thanks for all the support.